through the book of Jonah. If you haven't been here for the previous three weeks, I, I think you should just read the first three chapters. They're short. And you need to be looking at it like it was you. You were Jonah. Because all of us have been Jonah's. You know, we, uh, we know what's, what's right to do. We don't do it. Uh, Jonah was a prophet, and yet he rejected the counsel of God. And him and God were talking just like we're talking here. You know, Jonah knew God's voice. And, and Jonah was a man that God spoke to to deliver his message, spoke to him verbally to deliver his message to the people. And he refused. That means a lot to me because he was just a normal guy like me and you, right? Uh, God uses us too, but he speaks to us through his scripture and through other believers in the church, you know, uh, through the Holy Spirit. And uh, I would love to hear his voice, you know, him talking to me like he talked to Jonah and the other prophets. But uh, we have the Bible. Can you imagine? We have God's word to us written down that never changes, you know. There's not a new Bible for uh, this mess that we're in, although there are people writing new Bibles to say that, uh, that their sin is okay, you know, that, that it's okay to be a homosexual pastor or pastorette. It just, it's just not right. And yet, millions of people are deceived. And they run to those churches and fill them up because they don't have to worry about hearing the name Jesus or sin or conviction or hell. You know, hell is real. None of us are going, those of us who are saved. But thank God for that, right? Because none of us deserve to be saved. But God spoke through Jonah. And the first three chapters are very interesting. So is the, so is the whole book of Jonah. It starts out with, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And that word was go tell the Ninevites what I'm going to tell you to tell them. But Jonah hated the Ninevites. And he felt like they didn't deserve to be saved. And sometimes we kind of fall into that trap when we see people that are so anti-God that we don't even think they're worthy to be saved. And, but the Bible says, you've got to always go back to what the Bible says. That, this, is, this is our book for life. The Bible says it's God's desire that none perish, that none go to hell, but that all come to repentance. So it's God's desire that we turn from our ways to his ways. Anybody. Even politicians. That's true. Really? Can you imagine how hard it would be to be a Christian politician? My goodness, man. Yeah. Man, you get hit from all sides, even your own. Because there's so much corruption. 
stuff going on in politics. I wouldn't want to put my family through that, you know. So we need to pray for those who are trying to do the right thing. Swimming upstream, up a raging river, swimming upstream. We need to pray for our President Donald Trump. Can you imagine what he went through for four years? Being attacked violently every day. And yet God sustained him. When I look at that four years, I'd say, there is no man that could have endured that. Right? He was doing the right thing. And get, people from both sides of government were attacking him. And yet he kept on. He had a mission to straighten out this country. And he did it for four years. Against all odds. But I relate to Jonah because there's been many times in my life when I have flat said no to God. I know, the Bible says that for a man to know what is right and doesn't do it, to him it's sin. I mean, listen, let's just get down to, to it, guys. I mean, Jesus was point blank about how he dealt with the uh, religious folks. Uh, can you imagine him standing up and calling them whitewashed sepulchers full of dead men's bones? In other words, they're just cleaned up tombs. You know? And Wow, and, and he said that to him. Yep. Man, I want to be like him. No matter what the cost. And as our country degenerates, it might cost us our freedom. You know? That's okay. I don't mind doing a jail ministry. They're not going to shut me up. You know? I am owned by the Lord Jesus. And everybody that is saved is owned by Him. But the Bible says, you foolish people, you always resist the Holy Spirit that is in you. Isn't that sad? So Jonah was like us. He had his own way of doing things. And he thought the Ninevites were not worthy to be blessed by God. And so he took off. I mean, not only did he just not do it, he went the other direction. He ran from the mission that God had for him. That would have been like me staying in Washington State because I had a, I had a, a nice thing going on with Set Free Church in Washington State. But God wanted me here and made it clear through a lot of counsel. God wanted me here. I'm saying, God, I've spent all these years building this church and it's reaching hundreds and hundreds of people and you want me to go to Georgia? I didn't even have a passport. How am I going to get to Georgia? You know? <laughs> but here I am. And here we are. And I got to tell you guys, this is the most exciting time of my life. You know? I get to, I get to be a part of the horse ministry we got here. You know, I... And it's so awesome to see people out there relating to them and having fun and stuff. Yeah. And to watch God's provision as uh, and we got those two loads of river sand. And that sand is amazing. We needed it for the round pen. But it's God's provision that's making it happen. And so... God is blessing us even though we are imperfect. 
Get used to that. Everyone in here is imperfect. Even me. Imagine that, huh? Oh my God. I love this place. I love you guys. So Jonah, he says, I'm going to flee from God. Now remember, he had a personal relationship with God. He knew God. And down in his heart, he should have known that you can't run from him because he's everywhere, right? But he took off and hired a boat to take him away from where he was supposed to be going. And uh, all kind of stuff happened then. You know, you guys have been paying attention the last three weeks. You know, there's a big storm come up, violent waves getting ready to break the ship apart. And finally they figured out it was, jo it was Jonah running from God. So they threw him in the water, got rid of him. And the, and the sea calmed down. And so, but God ain't done with Jonah. Jonah thinks he's done for, especially when he got et by a big old fish, right? He says, that's it, man. You get swallowed up by a big old fish and you're just, you just enter the digestion system, you know. Can you imagine what it was like in there? A lot of us have cut open animals and fish, and that's a stanky thing in there. Yep. Yep. But Jonas is in it. It's all over him. Yep. Seaweed and all kind of stuff. And at that point, just before he thought he was dying, he cried out to God. Yep. And God heard. God already knew the end result of that fish getting swallowed because that fish was on a mission, taking him where he's supposed to go. And then spit him up, that's a nice way of saying it, spit him up on the beach. Oh my gosh, can you imagine him covered up with all that stuff, you know? But God set him where he wanted him. Now he still hated the people there. He didn't want to do it. But after what he just went through, God said, deliver the message I tell you. And then God said the same exact thing a second time to him. Go tell them what I'm telling you to tell them. Same message. The message doesn't change, guys. Same message. And so, then we come up to uh, chapter 4, where we're at now. Very interesting. Very interesting. And I hope that some of us can relate to what is being said here. And, Put yourself in Jonah's position. Because we have all kinds of circumstances in our lives that we know God wants us to do, but we, but we don't do it. You know, sometimes you're in the market. You see somebody having a bad day and God wants you to go talk to them. You know, or just say, God bless you. It's amazing how... Simple God bless you can change somebody's day. Yeah. You know, just to, it gets them out of their mess for a minute. You know. And if that opens the door to, to share more, share more. I know that uh, uh, the cashiers at Walmart love to hear that because their whole day is dealing with Walmart people. And we've all seen the videos of Walmart people. So just give them a God bless you. Makes them smile. So Jonah's anger at the Lord's compassion. You see, he knew God wanted to have compassion over this huge city. And the message was, 
you got 40 days and, and your city will be destroyed. That's it. That's the message. And they believed it. I mean, this was a wild, crazy town. And even the king, all he had to do was hear it once, and he believed it was going to happen. And he set in stage plans for it not to happen, hoping that God would have mercy on them. Just so simple words that God told him to say, the Holy Spirit then went in and pierced their hearts so they would receive it. A whole huge city takes several days to walk across it. Like L.A. or something. A lot of messed up folks. There's a lot of messed up folks here. You know? In our cities. And it's getting worse, man. So, but here it says in um, Jonah chapter 4 verse 1. But to Jonah, bringing this message, says, but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. It wasn't the right thing to do in his mind. To go and just share this with a bunch of heathens who hate God. This should give us encouragement, guys, that our efforts aren't futile. No matter how bad it is, we have a message from God. And it could be just as simple as God bless you. Just as simple as that. But Jonah, but to this Jonah, it seemed very wrong. And he became angry. Sometimes we'll get into a place in our lives where we just flat get mad at God. You know. This ain't fair. Tell you what, hanging on that cross wasn't fair either. You know what I mean? He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? Didn't I tell you they weren't worthy? And look, what, look what's going to happen now because of you, Lord. They're going to change, and they don't deserve it. That is what I tried to forestall. That's is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. He was trying to correct God. It was a town of heathens that didn't deserve God. Wretched people. This story is so important to me. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God. Oh my gosh. He's telling God that you're too compassionate for these people. They're going to end up responding to you and that ain't right. Using all these excuses. Remember, he was a prophet of God. It says, uh, I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love. Oh my gosh. A God who relents from send, sending calamity. And he's going, oh, poor me, poor me. I've got to go there. He says, now, Lord, take away my life. I ain't worth living. If I've got to go speak this message to the Ninevites. For it is better for me to die than to live. Oh, poor me. A prophet of God. See, this is so important for us to understand because even people that God has chosen can get into pity parties. You know? And so, don't think that all is lost if you get into one. See, this is a very uplifting story about what God will do, what limits he'll go to to get his message out there. But the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? Who are you? I'm God, not you. See? Who are you to be angry? 
Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. <laughs> then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. <laughs> God is even there when he has got this, when he is so miserable because of his own actions. God is still God. Yeah. You know. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. Nice and cool, right? So God provided him something to take care of, of, uh, of him. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm. See, God gives and God takes away, right? Yeah. Okay. Which chewed the plant so that it withered. So God gave him shade and then took it away. Sometimes God takes away stuff from us. You know? When the sun rose... God provided, God providing a scorching east wind. And the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. And a lot of us have experienced that being standing out in, in, in the sun. You know, it just kind of like takes, drains you, right? He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. <laughs> Poor me. This is a prophet, guys. But he's a regular guy like me and you. God uses normal people. And so God used the rebellious Jonah. He'll use us too. He really will. But God said to Jonah, I always love this, these kind of things, but God said, whenever it says God said, I listen carefully. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I am so angry I wish I were dead. So he's saying, it's right for me to be mad. Because I'm not getting my way. Things aren't going my way and I don't like it. You ever felt like that? But the Lord said... You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. A lot of times, we don't thank God during the bad times. What I like to think about, guys, is Someday, it's all going to be over, and we get to go to heaven. I get to see my mama. You know, there's no more tears, no more sorrow. You hear, you hear people say, well, Uncle George is up there looking down on us and smiling. He ain't. He don't see us down here. My mama doesn't see us down here. And, and her kids doing dope and... She doesn't see that because there would be tears and sorrow in heaven. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh? This city was important to God. And things that are important to God need to be important to us. Even those people that we may think don't deserve it because they're so wicked and so evil. This is evidence to us what God can do, even to the most wretched and evil people. It was God's desire that Nineveh would not perish. And God had went before Jonah and spoke to the people. 
so that they would receive the message. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people? 120,000. Back then, that's a big city. And all it took was the obedience of one man to save 120,000. We never know the impact of what we say to someone. There's more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left. Haven't got a clue. Right. And also many animals. This, everything was in chaos, guys. Just like it seems to be now when you see the news. Everything's in chaos. But our mission is the same. He gave it to us at the end of, in, in Matthew, it says, go. It doesn't say sit and wait for them to fall in the door. Go and make disciples. What does that mean? You got to be one. You got to be a disciple, not just a saved person, but someone who is actively seeking to do God's will. And God will use you. He will. That's what our mission is, God. May 1st is going to be a great day here. We get to smoke some meat. God gave us this big old smoker on wheels. And we get to bless folks by sharing God's love through food. Manna. God shared that to the people of Israel. Manna. Right? For no, no fee. Here, this is a gift from God. We get to do that. That thing you can you can smoke ten Boston butts at a time. That thing's big, man. I never tasted nothing like it before. That good stuff. I didn't even know what a Boston butt was. We don't have those on the West Coast, so I didn't even know what it is. There's a lot of things here we don't have on the West Coast. But guys, I just want to encourage you by telling you God's got something for you to do. As unworthy as you feel. See what I mean? Don't matter about your feelings. All that matters is what the Bible says. And the Bible's written for all of us. People tell me, I, I want to know God's will for my life. I said, are you reading the Bible? That's where it's going to come at you. From the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Right? So let's be a people that honor him, okay? Let's pray. Oh God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you that it's written to where even we can understand it. Well, there's things in here in the Bible that I don't understand. I don't understand how you spoke the world into existence, <laughs> but I know it's true because you said it in your, in your word. So, Father, may we just say yes to what you have for us. Father, as we're closing this part of our, our Sunday, I pray that the offering would meet the needs. Uh, a lot's going out right now with the, uh, with the horse ministry and the, and the sand, you know. It would be an impossible task if it wasn't for you. So I thank you, God, for providing that. Father, I, I pray that as we eat together, Father, that you'd bless our food and may it give us health and strength, Father, and show us how to live a life of joy. Your word says the joy of the Lord's our strength. Father, may we, may we understand what joy means and that others would see us uh, with joy in our life, even when 
bad stuff is going on around us, that we would be joyful. So Father, give us sweet fellowship as we eat together today. And Lord, may there be laughter in this place, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.